Well, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bile, not only for that kind introduction, but uh, also for all of the work you have done with our task force. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you appointed six people to the task force, but I'm happy to say there was a lucky seventh member who came to our meetings, and that was Councillor Anna Bilo, and I, I very much appreciate all your help and the connection between your office, between City Council and the task force that helped in the assembly of the information that has led to this report. I also want to mention the task force members. Uh, one of them uh, is able to be here today along with me, Muna Muhammad, uh, ja Janet Mason, Ed Clark, Blake Hutchison, and Brian Smith uh, rounded out uh, the task force. But I also want to, I can't mention them all by name, uh, but our staff support uh, that has helped us. I will mention our secretary, Phil uh, Gillies, who along with the staff have uh, done terrific work. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm uh, pleased to present to you today the final report of the Mayor's Task Force on Toronto Community Housing. In January of last year, you appointed the task force to offer advice on how to strengthen uh, to, and support the delivery of housing to its residents now and in future. We were to focus on four major areas, operations and service delivery, partnerships and innovation, capital revitalization and new development, and finally governance. The volunteer task force members attacked this massive project with an open mind and a serious purpose. The task force held 44 formal meetings and dozens of meetings with TCHC employees and their union representatives, stakeholders, housing experts from many jurisdictions within Canada and other countries, and the officials of the city, the province, and the federal government. We heard from over 1,000 tenants, over 1,000 tenants and community members through a series of public meetings and site visits to over 70 TCHC and nonprofit buildings and communities. We received hundreds of emails, letters, faxes, and phone calls from people across Toronto who are concerned about the present state and the future of TCHC. We interacted with TCHC executives and frontline employees on a regular basis and made well over 100 information requests to the corporation. In the first half of 2015, we focused on operational and service issues. In that phase, we heard from hundreds of TCHC residents. While many were happy with their homes and positive about the service they received, uh, we heard from others who were dissatisfied with a range of issues. Con concerns focused on a number of key areas. First, many residents do not feel safe in their homes. Some TCHC properties experience high levels of criminal activity, drug dealing, gang-related violence, and social disorder. Residents expressed concern about the state of building maintenance, cleanliness, and infestations. Others raised issues of poor communications from TCHC and slow response to tenant concerns. Many spoke to operational and management structures that are bureaucratic and unresponsive to tenants' needs. The task force recognizes that most TCHC employees work hard trying to provide a good living environment for the over 110,000 people who live in the buildings. Many of TCHC's problems are a result of structure, a result of history, and inadequate resources from all levels of government down over a 30-year period of time. We recognize also that the interim CEO, Greg Spurn, and his executive team, and Chair Bud Purvis and his board have been working hard to make improvements to TCHC's operations but we do not believe the employees are being given the structure, the training, the tools, the resources to do it well enough. TCHC needs to develop more of a customer service culture and the practical tools to serve its residents better. We, present you, Mr. Mayor, with, we presented uh, you, Mr. Mayor, with our interim report on July 15th. This report called on TCHC to up its game on these operational issues by responding with action plans on the key concerns. And TCHC has responded with several reports. The task force believes that improvements have been made on some of these operational items, but there's still a lot of work to be done and the effort must continue. There were costs associated with some of the operational improvements. 
So City Council will have to decide on how to respond to TCHC's request for supplementary funding uh, for this year of 2016. So this brings me uh, to today's final report. In this report, we focus on the overarching issues of finance, structure, partnership, and governance. First and foremost, we must report, Mr. Mayor, that the present funding model under which TCAC is operating is unsustainable. The company suffers financially and many tenants struggle socially. TCHC does not have the revenues it needs to manage and maintain good quality homes. The corporation is faced with a $2.6 billion capital repair backlog. This has been widely reported and is well known. The city, the province, the federal government need to step up to the plate and address the poor state of repair, which is the result of decades of underinvestment. What is not well known is that in addition to this capital problem, there is a serious shortfall in operating funding. <coughs> Starting in 2016, TCHC is projecting an, an operating deficit possibly growing over the years to over $200 million by 2026. So let me be clear about that. Even if the $2.6 billion capital problem disappeared tomorrow, the corporation would start to fall in needed operating funding the day after tomorrow. TCHC needs long-term financial and it needs long-term social sustainability. So what are the major recommendations in today's report? First, we want to see TCHC transition into a community-based nonprofit corporation. It needs to be more autonomous and accountable with a board made up of citizen directors who would have the skills and the expertise to lead and fulfill the board's fiduciary responsibility. The new organization would be regulated by the city as service manager under the Ontario un, under Ontario's Housing Services Act, just as Toronto's 240 existing nonprofit and co-op housing providers are now. We propose that this new corporation should be off the city's books with increased powers to borrow money to keep its buildings in good condition and, importantly, a mandate to build more of them. These are the, benef These are the benefits we see of moving to this nonprofit housing corporation. Service culture where tenants are the primary stakeholder. Two, giving tenants a stronger voice in the governance system. Three, continued public accountability and greater clarity of the relationship between the city and the board of directors. And four, the potential to increase TCHC's borrowing capacity for renovations and new development by removing it from the city's debt ceiling limits. The report recommends two models that could be used to implement this new structure. The first we call manage now, own incrementally. Under this model, the city creates a new independent community-based nonprofit housing corporation, which we call New Home for purposes of this report. To manage, to manage by lease or management agreement existing TCHC properties. TCHC would become a development and asset renewal company that would transfer title to viable redevelopment and renovated properties to New Home or to other nonprofit housing providers as the work is completed on these different projects. The second model we call reform first then transfer. This option would see TCHC divided into three distinct divisions, operations, development, and corporate services, each run by a general manager. This would allow for a greater separation of the distinct functions. A small head office team would coordinate the overall corporation. The task force further recommends that the new company's board be reduced in size from 13 to 7 to 9 citizen members. We believe that city councillors can be most effective with their input at the tenant advisory committee level, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. Second, we want to see more income mixing in the portfolio. 
bringing about better social integration and more revenue to fix the financial situation. We want to see rent geared to income targets move to a more mixed portfolio of 70% RGI renters and 30% market or low end of market. The current mix of 90% RGI to 10% market is not sustainable, nor is the norm, nor is it the norm in nonprofit housing across the country. We believe this mix of people of different income levels will lead to stronger communities and neighborhoods. Let me be clear also on this recommendation in saying that the task force is not proposing that there should be any reduction in subsidies. 52,600 households are subsidized now and they should be kept. They should be kept at current levels throughout this process, but they don't all have to reside in the homes of the current portfolio. We should be giving them options. Third, we want to see better buildings and we want to see more of them. The portfolio must be revitalized funded by intensification on some sites and by creating market rental and affordable ownership housing. Support will be needed from all three levels of government through a range of new and existing funding tools such as capital grants or loans, debt guarantees, donations or preferential sale terms of surplus or underdeveloped publicly owned land. We recommend a review process to determine whether some buildings might better move to other nonprofit organizations that currently lease or operate them or have specialized expertise to better manage some of the buildings. A review would also be conducted to decide to renovate, to demolish or replace or sell uh, existing properties. Federal and provincial funding will be vital to this process and I must say we are encouraged by the positive signals being given by both governments but there is no doubt all orders of government have got to be involved in this process and it needs to be vigorously pursued. Fourth, the newly formed community-based nonprofit housing corporation would move to a decentralized organizational structure. We want to see more localized decision making at the operating unit level with closer contact between managers, frontline workers and tenants to align with this decentralized management, we recommend the establishment of tenant advisory committees made up of primarily of tenants, of course, but also joined by city and community resource staff uh, from time to time and uh, appropriately by the local city councillor. We see a new company with fewer levels of management at corporate headquarters and more decision makers out in the field. We also call for a more effective approach in dealing with vulnerable tenants, many of whom live with mental health and addiction problems and issues associated with aging. Many of these tenants are doing well, but others need support services. TCHC doesn't have the mandate or the funding to properly serve this population. These health, mental health, addiction and related services need to be provided by agencies mainly funded by the province through the local health integration networks. The needs here go beyond what a social housing landlord can be expected to provide. A social housing landlord's role should be to link people to the appropriate service providers. Fifth and finally of our main five recommendations, uh, we call for a reform of Ontario's current rent geared to income or RGI system to allow low income renters more choice and portability and housing location. Portable housing benefits are the way of the future and simply also we need to, in the short run, simplify the administrative process. This streamlining of housing assistance can align with the delivery of social assistance and childcare subsidies, uh, creating a single window access administrative system as part of that streamlining. Mayor Tory, we uh, present our report to you today in the belief that significant changes recommended in it can put this housing portfolio back on its feet, feet socially and economically. We believe our recommendations will help develop a client service oriented culture, increase the speed of responsiveness to tenants, promote tenant self-determination, give more choices and less bureaucracy, lead to more localized decision making and empower on-site staff, foster better communications with tenants and give tenants 
more involved in local operations. So this marks the end of our task force mandate, but it is hopefully the beginning of a new way forward in meeting the needs of social and affordable housing and its residents here in Toronto. Thank you very much.